Question 16. Explain whether we can use semaphore or mutex or spin lock in interrupt context in Linux kernel. Answer. Semaphore or mutex cannot be used for interrupt context in Linux kernel, while spin locks can be used for locking in interrupt context. Question 17. A vast majority of high-performance embedded systems today use RISC architecture. Why? Answer. According to the instruction sets used, computers are normally classified into RISC and CISC. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing. The design philosophy of RISC architecture is such that only one instruction is performed on each machine cycle thus taking very less time and speeding up when compared to their CIS counterparts. Here the use of registers is optimized as most of the memory access or Operations are limited to store and load operations. Fewer and simple addressing modes and simple instruction formats leads to greater efficiency. Optimization of compilers. Reorganization of code for better throughput in terms of space and time complexities. All these features make it the choice of architecture in majority of the embedded systems. CISC again have their own advantages and they are preferred whenever the performance and compiler simplification are the issues to be taken care of. Question 18. Why do we need virtual device drivers when we have physical device drivers? Answer. Device drivers are basically a set of modules slash routines so as to handle a device for which a direct way of communication is not possible through the user's application program and these can be thought of as an interface thus keeping the system small providing for minimalistic of additions of code. If any physical device drivers can't perform all the logical operations needed in a system in cases like IPC signals and so on. The main reason for having virtual device drivers is to mimic the behavior of certain hardware devices without it actually being present and these could be attributed to the high cost of the devices or the unavailability of such devices. These basically create an illusion for the users as if they are using the actual hardware and enable them to carry out their simulation results. Examples could be the use of virtual drivers in case of network simulators. Also the support of virtual device drivers in case a user runs an additional OS in a virtual box kind of software. Question 19. What is the need for DMACINUS? Answer. Direct memory access is mainly used to overcome the disadvantages of interrupt and program controlled I.O. DMA modules usually take the control over from the processor and perform the memory operations and this is mainly because to counteract the mismatch in the processing speeds of I.O. units and the processor. This is comparatively faster. It is an important part of any embedded systems and the reason for their use is that they can be used for bursty data transfers instead of of single byte approaches. It has to wait for the system's resources such as the system bus in case it is already in control of it. Question 20. What is endianness of a system and how do different systems communicate with each other? Answer. Endianness basically refers to the ordering of the bytes within words or larger bytes of data treated as a single entity. When we consider a several bytes of data say for instance 4 bytes of data, size the lower byte if stored in a higher address and others in successively decreasing addresses, then it refers to the big endian and the vice versa of this refers to little endian architecture. Intel 80 by 86 usually follows Little Onion and others like IBM systems follow Big Endian formats. If the data is being transmitted care has to be taken so as to know as to which byte whether the higher or the lower byte is being transmitted. Hence a common format prior to communication has to be agreed upon to avoid wrong interpretation slash calculations. Usually layer modules are written so as to automate these conversions in operating systems. Question 21. What could be the reasons for a system to have gone blank and how could you debug it? Answer. Possible reasons could be PC being overheated, dust having been accumulated all around, CPU fans not working properly, faulty power connections, faulty circuit board from where the power is being drawn, support drivers not having been installed. Debugging steps which can be taken are cleaning the system thoroughly and maintaining it in a dust-free environment. Environment that is cool enough and facilitates for easy passage of air should be ideal enough by locating the appropriate support drivers for the system in consideration and having them installed. 
Question 22. Explain interrupt latency and how can we decrease it? Answer. 1. Interrupt latency basically refers to the time span an interrupt is generated and it being serviced by an appropriate routine defined, usually the interrupt handler. 2. External signals. Some condition in the program or by the occurrence of some event. These could be the reasons for generation of an interrupt. 3. Interrupts can also be masked so as to ignore them even if an event occurs for which a routine has to be executed. 4. Dot following steps could be followed to reduce the latency. ISRs being simple and short. Interrupts being serviced immediately. Avoiding those instructions that increase the latency period. Also by prioritizing interrupts over threads. Avoiding use of inappropriate APIs. Question 23. How to create a child process in Linux? Answer. Prototype of the function used to create a child process is pid underscore t fork void. Fork is the system call that is used to create a child process. It takes no arguments and returns a value of type pid underscore t. If the function succeeds it returns the pid of the child process created to its parent and child receives a zero value indicating its successful creation. On failure a minus one will be returned in the parent's context. No child process will be created and a no will be set. The child process normally performs all its operations in its parents context but each process independently of one another and also inherits some of the important attributes from it such as the current directory, root directory and so on. Significance of watchdog timer in embedded systems. Watchdog timer is basically a timing device that is set for predefined time interval and some event should occur during that time interval else the device generates a timeout signal. One one application where it is most widely used is when the mobile phone hangs and no activity takes place. In those cases watchdog timer performs a restart of the system and comes to the rescue of the users. It is used to reset to the original state whenever some inappropriate events take place such as too many commands being given at the same time or other activities that result in malfunctioning of the GUI. It is usually operated by counter devices. Question 24. If you buy some tools, what are the features you look for in? Answer. Deterministic operating system having guaranteed worst case interrupt latency and context switch times. Documentation providing for the minimum, average and maximum number of clock cycles required by each system call. Interrupt response times should be very minute. Context switch time should be very low. Compatibility with several plugin devices. Overall it should be very reliable. Question 25. Why is Java mostly used in embedded systems? Answer. Java was mainly designed and conceptualized for code that can work on different platforms without any hassles and also for being secure enough so as to not harm or corrupt other modules of code. Features like exception handling, simple syntax and automatic garbage collection all work in its favors as the language for use in S's. Also that it is widely used in the form of Java applets makes it very popular confining it to the limit of JVM. It is dynamic in nature. Its use is also being exploited in enterprise systems in the form of J2E, J2Say, J2Me in case of mobile applications. Question 26. What are the commonly found errors in embedded systems? Answer. Damage of memory devices due to transient current and static discharges. Malfunctioning of address lines due to a short in the circuit. Malfunctioning of data lines. Some memory locations being inaccessible in storage due to garbage or errors. Improper insertion of memory devices into the memory slots. Faulty control signals. Question 27. What is the need for having multi-byte data input and output buffers in case of device ports? Answer. It's normally the case that some devices transfer the output both in burst A or a sequential manner and also during input entry. If we take the example of keyboards, all the data entered is stored in a buffer and given at a time or one character at a time. In case of networking there may be several requests to access the same resource and all these are queued in a buffer and serviced in the order they are received. Hence to avoid the input slash output units from getting overloaded with requests we use multi-byte buffers. Question 28. What is the difference between hardware design and software design? Answer. Hardware design is designed with the collaboration of interconnected parallel components that inherits the properties of each other. Whereas software design is designed with sequential components that are based on objects and threads. Hardware design structure doesn't change dynamically and it can't be created, modified or removed easily. Whereas software design structure can be changed dynamically and reusability features used to define 
modifying the components. It also includes easy creation, modification and removal of the components from the software. Hardware design focuses on individual components that are represented using analytical model that uses the transfer functions. Whereas software design represent the components using computation model that can have abstract execution engine or it can use the virtual machine that are non-deterministic.